We are the unafraid, the undeniable, the unstoppable. We are in the top 20% of the best global universities. In a world of the common, we are the uncommon. As a top 50 public research university in the heart of the city, we are champions in every sense of the word and ranked in the top 20 nationally as a leader in innovation. We didn't come here to conform, but to undo the status quo. With 29 schools and programs ranked in the top 50, we graduate leaders who are prepared to fix what was once thought unfixable. We are the uncommon that change commonplace. And we are unlike any university you've ever seen. We are VCU. Thank you. 
Please rise if you are able for our national anthem and presentation of colors. Please be seated. And please welcome to the Provost of Virginia Commonwealth University, Dr. Foti Sotiropoulos. Good morning. And welcome to Virginia Commonwealth University's commencement ceremony. Today, we gather to celebrate the, accomplishment, the accomplishments of the VCU class of 2023. <laughs> On behalf of President Michael Rao, the Board of Visitors, and our faculty and staff, it is a pleasure to welcome you to this morning's commencement. Please join me in recognizing our VCU Police Honor Guard, our soloist, Caitlin Vidra, and the VCU Commencement Brass, conducted by Ross Walter, for leading us in the National, in the national Anthem. Let's give them a round of applause, please. Now, I will introduce those who share the platform with me today. I ask the members of the platform party to rise as you are recognized and remain seated. And please, all of you, hold your applause until the end of the introductions. All members of the VCU Board of Visitors, all of our academic deans, 
our interim senior vice president for the health sciences and CEO of the VCU Health System, Marlon Levy, VCU Alumni Council Chair, Faith Wilkerson, Faculty Senate President, Maria Rivera, Student Government Association Graduate President, Mesoma Azi, and our Grand Marshals, Ellen Byrne and Umberto Fabello. Other members of the, part of the Platform Party will be recognized during the program. Will all members of the Platform Party please rise? Now please join me in recognizing this remarkable group of individuals who have dedicated themselves to the success of the students, faculty and staff of Virginia Commonwealth University. Thank you all and please be seated. We are joined by members of our outstanding and committed faculty. Would all faculty stand so we may express our gratitude for the integral role you have played in transforming the lives of our graduates? Let's hear it for our faculty, our amazing faculty. Thank you. Now, please welcome the President of Virginia Commonwealth University, Dr. Michael Rao. Good morning. Come on, you can do better than that. This is a graduation ceremony. Good morning. All right, and it is a great morning. It's a great morning to get together with our Board of Visitors, all of my faculty colleagues, our provost, our deans, and of course our staff who have made this ceremony possible. And it's great to be together with you. It's also great to get, be together here with all of your friends and your family members. They're here to celebrate with you and I'm so glad that we're all together. So as we gather to celebrate your graduation from Virginia Commonwealth University, you have to realize this is a really major milestone in your life for all of you. You've worked really hard to get where you are, and we're all really, really proud of you. You're exactly why we all do this. You're why we're here. You're what drives us every day. You're what makes us feel a sense of renewal all of the time. And I have to tell you, I'm particularly proud of you because all of you are an example of tremendous perseverance and resilience. So what happened in the time that most of you were here? Yeah, that pandemic. And it has had enduring impacts on most of you in so many ways. And you've come out of it. We know it affected your education, yet look at where you are. You made it through. This is a class that's graduating on time, and it's a class that's graduating in record numbers. So what you've done is great for yourself, but it's really, really great because you've set a standard for VCU, and you're setting a standard for the future of all VCU students and ultimately graduates, and I'm grateful to all of you for that. So years ago, you might remember, if you can remember, that many of you came to the Ram family at something that we called the New Student Convocation. I remember it. We were really excited about and talking about all these things that you guys would do and the things you'd accomplish as students, and now we're gonna be thinking about what you accomplish as graduates. And you might remember that at that convocation, I took out an old document that came from VCU's first president, whose name was Warren Brandt. I had a chance to get to know him when I first came. Really, really lovely human being, a wonderful man. So what he saw was really cool. He saw VCU's potential to become this place that would be dedicated to things you don't hear a lot about in higher education, like fostering collaboration across disciplines, now that's stuff that we do today, but it wasn't stuff that they did then. One that would really model the needs of contemporary society, the needs of human beings and people, something 
that would be a real break away from the centuries-old models of universities that had been around for years and years and years. And there was something that he said, and I actually have it right here. He specifically said to the first class, and I guess it would have been like 1968 or whatever, he said, this is an urban public university model that will be an exciting concept, an academic approach without precedent. VCU will become a name that will mean a great deal in years to come, and it'll be one of the leading educational institutions, end quote, and he meant in the nation. And you've helped make VCU just that. You've helped make it a national model of what a public research university should be and what all public universities need to be. You've helped make this a university that matters for the future. Why? Because you've helped make it matter to all human beings. So you, along with our dedicated faculty and staff, all the mentors out there and other people who care so deeply about VCU, our alumni who get involved in mentoring our graduates and frankly our students while they're here, y'all are the reason why VCU is recognized now by US News and World Report as one of the top 20 most innovative universities in the United States. That's a big deal. We could never have talked about that 10 years ago. But I'm convinced with all of the ways in which all of you come and go at VCU, you have helped VCU evolve to new levels. So this VCU degree that you have now earned, it'll open lots of doors because you're building on our reputation as the most innovative and creative thinking institution out there. You have made a commitment to tackle the most vexing problems that society faces. I know that because you've done it, many of you, as students. You're committed to being the solutions that we need. Sound familiar? You are the solutions. You've helped make VCU the innovative model of a public research university that others are now emulating throughout the country and really throughout the world. We're all so excited about what's coming in each of your next chapters. And you're ready for what the world holds for you. It's really been an honor to get to know so many of you. I haven't gotten to meet all of you. It'd be really hard to get to all 30,000 of you, but I have met a lot of you. I see some of you who I've had a chance to meet. And it's been wonderful to watch so many of you grow during your time here. This has been a transformative life experience for most of you. What I love most about so many of you is your steadfast values and what I watched, particularly during the pandemic. And that is, you cared about each other. You cared about faculty members. You cared about our staff. You took care of each other. And I've watched you in so many of the service environments that you've been in. You've cared for other human beings. Now I want you to also remember something I said to you, most of you in, and I say it in every one of these convocations, and I'm gonna say it to you again. I want you to always remember, and your families and friends will appreciate this, because they probably told you this before you came. I want you to always remember who you are. And I want you to be clear about how you feel and how you think and be true to yourselves. Why did I say that? I said that because there are so many people out there through whatever means of media or whatever trying to tell you how you feel. You should know how you feel. If it's going into your brain, and someone else is telling you how you feel, you're not connecting with how you feel. And my advice to you is, that's a problem. Don't let that happen. You are the most powerful person in your life. 
I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to continue to listen to your inner voice. And I want you to always remember that when you do that, you can do anything that you're determined to do. You are the next greatest generation of Americans, and I'm proud of you. You are the positive future that this world needs. You're going to make the world a better place, not just for yourselves, but for all human beings. You will do great things. You will do difficult things. And you will excel because you know who you are and you know what you can do. VCU class of 2023, you are forever beloved and respected members of the VCU family. We are so proud of you. And now you're becoming alumni. We're cheering for you as you go forward on your continued journeys. Stay in touch, stay engaged, continue to shape our world and your alma mater, VCU, in positive ways. I could not be more proud of you. I'm really excited about what you're all going to do. VCU class of 2023, congratulations. <laughs> and to the rest of you in the room, to our family members, to our friends, all of you who supported our graduates throughout it all, thank you. Thank you so very much. We celebrate you and we are grateful for the care that you've shown our students during their time at VCU, particularly since it was such a challenging time. Thank you for entrusting our, your students to us. We're so proud of them and we look forward to them buying you lunch today because they probably owe you that. VCU Rams, congratulations. Okay, so now it's that time in the program where I have this great honor and pleasure of introducing to you someone who knows a tremendous amount about the potential of VCU, Virginia Commonwealth University. And they know a lot about this mission, a mission to create access and combine it with ways to improve the human condition. The Honorable Seth Raman, Seth Raman Panchanathan is a computer scientist and engineer, but he's also the 15th director of the United States National Science Foundation. The NSF is a nine and a half billion dollar independent federal agency, and it's the only government agency that's actually charged with advancing all fields of scientific discovery, technological innovation, and STEM education. This is a guy who's totally dedicated to seeing everyone's potential be realized in the sciences, technology, engineering, mathematics, and all the connected and related fields. He has a tremendous distinguished career of his own in science and technology, engineering, and he is a strong and deeply dedicated educator and researcher. His career has spanned three decades. He served as executive vice president at Arizona State and this is where he founded something called the Center for Cognitive Ubiquitous Computing. Prior to becoming director at NSF, Ponch served uh, on the National Science Board for about six years, and he also served on and shared numerous, many, many high-level research and innovation organizations. He's a fellow of the National Academy of Inventors, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the Association for Computing, Machinery, and just tons of other science and engineering organizations. Poncha's incredible scientific contributions have advanced the areas of human-centered multimedia computing, haptic user interfaces, person-centered ubiquitous computing technologies for empowering individuals with a range, with a range of abilities, it is sincerely my pleasure to welcome our speaker, Dr. Panchanathan, back to VCU, our NSF nationwide 
National Science Foundation. Punch. Thank you, President Rao. Hello, Rams. How are you all doing today? Is that all? Much better. Thank you, President Rao. Thank you, Provost Sidopoulos. And thank you, Dr. Hemor, and the entire Board of Trustees, and all the deans for this amazing opportunity to be in front of all of you today. You know, when I look at commencement speeches, I think about the four degrees that I had and the commencement speeches that I surely must have been at. And I asked myself yesterday, do I remember anything from those commencement speeches? Do I even remember who was the commencement speaker? No, 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 and no. So I have a mission today with all of you. I am going to make sure that you are going to remember the speaker and even more importantly, what the speaker said. Therefore, I consulted with President Rao and the Regents Chair, the Trustees Chair, Rector Hamor, and they said that until these folks pass this quiz at the end, we won't sign on their degrees. So that quiz is going to be what we're gonna talk about today, okay? VCU, V, C, U. We see you. We see your determination. We see your hard work. We see your perseverance. You are here today because of all of that. And the president talked about the COVID moment. You are the COVID children who have really made it. This is truly amazing. So I said to myself, what do I tell these folks? The central part of VCU is the C. I said, why not I focus on C's that you will remember because you have a quiz at the end that you have to clear, folks. The first C is curiosity. Curiosity is something that we as human beings have in large measure. We are explorers, every one of that. I see my grandkids now exploring away with the blocks, making interesting designs. It starts right at birth. We are explorers. You are all explorers because you are curious. You have been curious and that's why you are here today. Never, never give up that curiosity. This curiosity should be with you all through your life because that is what is going to make you the successful human beings that you want to be and the nation wants to be, your families want to be. Curiosity. Remember, quiz, make note. The next thing is commitment. You are here because you have been so committed to this journey. You have persevered through your K-12 education. You have gotten the grades. You have written these, you know, SATs and ACTs. Then you went through the university process, tough as it might be, challenging as it might be, sometimes online, sometimes hybrid, sometimes face-to-face, -face, but you persevered because you were committed to this cause of I am going to persist, persevere, and get here. That commitment, that commitment is what you need all through your life. This is just the beginning. So make sure, make sure that that commitment you carry all through your life. Curiosity, commitment, and quiz. Third, third C is about courage. This class, this class is about courage. Courage in its full form. Why? Because you had COVID, the other C, that you had to work through. It was fearful at times, but you never gave up. 
You said, I am going to transcend beyond the COVID challenge. I am going to be courageous. There are many, many other things that you have done to be courageous. Do you all have your aspirants ready for the headache with the loud voice? Okay, that's what my class students do typically. Courage. So you have the courage. Remember, as you move into the future, you are going to be needing this courage. There will be a lot of times where you will have challenges, where you will be make, asked to make some choices. And the people who are courageous are the people who really succeed and make a mark in their life. You want to know examples of them? Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Dr. King. These are people who exemplified the spirit of courage. So if you have them as your role models, as people that you look up to, make sure that you seize on the sea, which is courage. Curiosity, commitment, courage. Next, C, collaboration. You did not get here because all of what you did was just yourself. You got here because you worked in various teams your friends helped you, your family members helped you, your parents helped you, your professors helped you, your teachers in K-12 helped you, your community members helped you, your church members helped you. All of that is what the community and the collaboration that has made you what you are here today. And believe me, you will need more of that collaborative spirit as you go into the future because that's how you're going to be able to be, continue to be able to achieve the great things in life. Curiosity, commitment, courage, collaboration. And the fifth one, halfway through, I have 10 of them. If you're wondering, communication, communication. If I came to this, Talk. And I read either from the teleprompter or from my notes here, and I said, hello, graduates. It's nice to be here with all of you. Now, you would not remember that, would you? You would probably not have a headache. It's about communication. You have learned the skills of communication, writing essays, submitting assignments, being in presentations. But trust me, that is just the beginning. The way you communicate, how you communicate, what you communicate is what is going to ensure success in your life. So please make sure that you hold on to what you have learned, but expand, build more. The communication skill is going to be exceedingly important. So what you have learned here in all of these five things, curiosity, commitment, courage, collaboration, and Communication. Ah, the quiz is looking tough now. The five. Now, I'm going to tell you five more things that you might want to endow yourselves with that you might not have already been exposed to. You might have been, which is great. Then continue to build and scale on that. I call them mindsets. You accumulated a lot of skill sets but you also need mindsets to be successful in your life. And one of the important mindsets is while you might have think that I have learned a lot, I have taken a lot of courses, I have gotten the A grades, or whatever grades it might be, this is just the beginning because this is about constant learning. The other C, constant learning. You learn all through your life, learning never stops particularly in the AI futures that we are all embarking in, in full steam. It is more about what you're going to learn all through your life. So what you have learned here is the skill to learn. And therefore, the constant learning is a mindset that you need to have as you are thinking about your future. People who are constantly learning are the people who are successful in their careers. Constant learning. So please make sure that you never give up the opportunities to learn. Competition. If you thought that you had seen competition in your classes, in your courses, be ready. 
this is just a beginning. You're going to see competition all through your life in every form of every type of every more. But I will tell you one thing, competition is never, never about the competitor, it is about you. Competition is the motivator, it is the inspirer, it is the element that makes you better than you can ever be. It is the one that makes you as excellent as you can be so that you can unleash your fullest potential. Never focus on the competition, use the competition to make yourself as best as you can be. The competitive spirit should be about making yourself the best that you can be. That's the C. And in this competition these days, you are seeing a lot of interesting things happening around you. But remember, civility, the other C is exceedingly important. Civility. Never, never give up on this principle of civility. Civil discourse. Yes, we are fortunate, all of us, to be in a great nation which gives us the freedom of speech and expression. And that's the gold standard. We should hold on to it dearly. But with this principle of civility, how can I engage in civil discourse? And that's an extremely important C to remember because that will carry you a long way. Civility. And I will tell you this one that I use the most of the 10 that I'm going to tell you. The eight that has happened, if you're making note. Cheerful attitude, cheerful disposition. I have never seen folks, when I have smiled, they have said, oh, back to me. Never seen that. A smile has always gotten me a smile back. Smile is the most infectious thing. I have I'll tell you, I've gotten so many smiles. I see my great colleague from NSF sitting right in the front row here. Thank you for her service. Our VCU leader who happens to serve at NSF, Dr. Roslyn Hargraves, who is in the STEM EDU directorate. Now, you want to learn about smiles? You look at Roslyn. This is what it is about. A cheerful disposition, optimism. I find a lot of people pessimistic. Oh, this is not good. Oh, that is bad. This is rotten. Give it up. We have to be optimistic in our country. Our country is founded on optimism and that leads to innovation. Be optimistic and be cheerful. That is the other C. And the last C, folks, to me the most important of all, is compassion. Compassion. You're all here today because you had the opportunities. You had the opportunities. Somebody lifted you up. Your parents, your family members, your friends, your teachers, your community, as I said, they lifted you up. You have the golden opportunities that you're wearing these gold sashes now. The golden opportunities that you've had. But remember, there are millions of people who don't have those opportunities. That is an unacceptable thing for our nation. We cannot let that happen. Opportunities has to be there for everyone, everywhere, across our nation and across the globe. So therefore, what is the action item? I told you I'll give you a quiz, but I'm also going to leave you with a homework. That homework is for life. That homework is for life because each one of you, each one of you has to pledge today as part of your graduation ceremonies, as you turn your tassel, you're going to take this pledge. That pledge is the following, that you will make sure at least 25 people are touched by you, mentored by you, motivated by you, inspired by you, helped by you, so that you lift them, so that they too have the opportunities that you have had today. Without that, your life will not be full. And I tell you, when you touch these 25 people or more, it is not about them, it is about you. It is about you, that you have really made your life purposeful and worthwhile. So if you really want this to be about purposefulness, happiness, being worthwhile, make sure you lift at least 25 people, if not more, in your lifetime and provide them the opportunities. Now the quiz. You're all going to say it. 
I'm not going to say it. Number one. Yes, the graduates, they are, they are beating you. <laughs> they are the people that helped you in your assignments, but at least you can do better now. Curiosity, yes. What is the next one? Commitment, next. Courage, next. Next. Yes, communication, next. Continuous, constant learning. That is the only constant change. Next. Competition, folks. You forgot. Okay, next. Civility, next. Cheerful at this position, Ross. Remember Ross. And the last one, compassion. You are all pledging today that you're going to lift at least 25 people, right? Yes, what is this? That's not a commitment. Well, some of you passed the quiz. Congratulations, the C. Class of 2023, the C. Go Rams. So, Panch, that was a memorable, memorable presentation and commencement speech. I will tell you that of all the commencement speeches I've heard, that may be the one I remember the most. <laughs> My only advice is make it so that everyone can hear you. Yeah. And the That's other real. piece of advice is a little more energy. energy. Yeah. Okay. I have not had my coffee yet. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Panch. And so every year, many of you know that we offer very special recognition <clears throat> to individuals, to people who enhance VCU and the quality of life in our communities throughout. So today, we're going to begin with the presentation of Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters, which is our highest recognition at VCU. And this year, we're very proud to present this award to our commencement speaker, Dr. Seth Roman Panchanathan. And so, Rector Haymore, if you will please stand together with Panch, bring him to this side, please. And I, I will ask Provost Sotropoulos if he will kindly go forward and speak. Seturaman Panchwanathan, as a recognized leader, engineer, and scientific pioneer, you have garnered the respect and admiration of your peers and the communities you have served. As the director of the National Science Foundation, your commitment to advancing research technologies and STEM education has been integral to the science and engineering community. Your contributions over the last three decades create a lasting legacy for future generations of scientists and engineers. President Rao. Seth Roman Panchanathan, in recognition of your significant contributions, <coughs> you've got me choked up. <laughs> by the authority vested in me by the BCU's Board of Visitors, I hereby confer upon you the degree, <clears throat> Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all of the rights, privileges, and emoluments thereunto pertaining. I am proud to call myself the alumni of this great university, VCU.
you. And now it's time to present another of our top awards called the Edward Wayne Medal, which honors people who have made outstanding contributions or provided exemplary service to Virginia Commonwealth University. And this year's Edward A. Wayne Medal both go to Kathleen and John Luke. John is here with us on the stage, and I will ask Rector Haymore if you will kindly escort John back over here to the left side of the podium. Provost Sotoropoulos, if you will kindly go forward. Kathleen and John Luke, we are grateful for your remarkable generosity and tireless support of the Virginia Commonwealth University. Your commitment to VCU is unwavering and evident through your philanthropy and support of the School of Business, Massey Comprehensive Cancer Center, Board of Visitors Fund, and the Sheltering Arms Institute. Your remarkable service to the university and health system will continue to enrich and inspire our students, faculty, and other members of the VCU community for years to come. President Rao. John, on behalf of yourself and Kathleen, in recognition of your tremendous generosity in so many ways, <clears throat> by the authority vested in me by the Board of Visitors of Virginia Commonwealth University, I hereby present to you the Edward A. Wayne Medal from Virginia Commonwealth University. Kathleen and John, your, your generosity has been just tremendous. You've touched all of us in so many ways, more than most people know, partly because you're so humble. Thank you so much. Now is the time that we will move forward and present our candidates for all of their degrees. And I will ask our provost to please step forward and present those who are eligible for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in all disciplines please rise? <clears throat> President Rao, on behalf of Dr. Manu Gupta, Interim Dean of the Graduate School, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia and also the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of each of your faculties, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Philosophy. And now we will have the hooding of our PhD graduates Provost Sotoropoulos. This is the time we've been waiting for, so the candidates' major advisors will join me on stage to hood the PhD graduates. The president will be joined by Rector Haymor in congratulating the graduates. Could, you, could graduates begin to walk across the stage with your faculty advisors, please? Receiving the Doctor of Philosophy in Biomedical Engineering, Austin Golden, accompanied by Dr. Jennifer Poitzer. Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Chemical and Life Science Engineering, and Catherine Brooks, accompanied by Dr. Vamsmi Vladimir. 
receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering, Enoch Solomon, accompanied by Dr. Melissa Tyler. <laughs> receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Health Science, Melissa Reeves, accompanied by Dr. Melissa Jamerson. Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Health-Related Sciences, James Sherwood, accompanied by Dr. Sarah Maris. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Health-Related Sciences, Miranda Yelvington, accompanied by Dr. Sarah Stacy Reynolds. Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry, Kalani Wenjisaha, accompanied by Dr. Soma Dahakal. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry, Anthony Lee, accompanied by Dr. Matthew Hartman. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Nanoscience and Nanotechnology, Tristan Moon, accompanied by Dr. Mauricio Bertino. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Systems Modeling and Analytics, Surafa Suramelady, accompanied by Dr. Melissa Tyler. Yeah. Oh. Dr. Kiki Liu, Chi Liu. Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Public Policy and Administration, Corey Miles, accompanied by Dr. Saltanat Liebert. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical and Translational Science, Yolanda Valentine, accompanied by Dr. Ashley Cowart. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Human Genetics, Mirama Jamil, accompanied by Dr. Ashley Cohart. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical and Translational Science, Jinkal Sa, accompanied by Dr. Praveen Bhupata. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Martinique Seeley, accompanied by Dr. Christine Bai. Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Elizabeth Severson Irby, accompanied by Dr. Hilary Parkhouse. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Christine Powell, accompanied by Dr. Yao Ying Zhu. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Special Education, Ira Pati, accompanied by Dr. Yao Ying Zhu. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Medical Physics, Rishma Kapoor, accompanied by Dr. Jantidur Pauta. Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Neuroscience, Martina Hernandez, accompanied by Dr. Audrey Lafrenet. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmacology and Toxicology, Kimberly Karen, accompanied by Dr. Aaron Lichtman. Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Biostatistics, Shin Wang, accompanied by Dr. Roy Sabo. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Social Behavioral Sciences, Sharon Doherty, accompanied by Dr. Kelly Carlisle. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Social and Behavioral Sciences, 
Asma Nemos, accompanied by Dr. Vanessa Shepard. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Art History, Anna Sutherland, accompanied by Dr. Catherine Roach. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Integrative Life Sciences, Hussein Gadig, accompanied by Dr. Melissa Tyler. Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Integrative Life Sciences, Ashley Harris, accompanied by Dr. Michelle Peace. <laughs> Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Integrative Life Sciences, Elena Holt, accompanied by Dr. Michelle Peace. Receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Integrative Life Sciences, Sydney Ann Key, accompanied by Dr. John Ryan. And once again, congratulations to our PhD graduates. And Provost Sotoropoulos, would you please come forward again to the podium so that you can present our candidates for their master's degrees and post-baccalaureate certificates. Will the master's degree candidates for all majors in the following schools and offices, please rise and be recognized in person. From the College of Engineering, from the College of Health Professions, the College of Humanities and Sciences, the School of the Arts, the School of Business, the School of Dentistry, the School of Education, the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs, the School of Medicine, the School of Nursing, the School of Pharmacy, the School of Population Health, the School of Social Work, the VCU Da Vinci Center, the VCU Office of Research. Will the candidates for all post-baccalaureate graduate certificates and post-master certificates in all disciplines, please rise. President Rao, on behalf of Dr. Manu Gupta, Interim Dean of the Graduate School, it gives me pleasure to present the students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the graduate faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, also the Board of Visitors, but upon recommendation of each of your faculties, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you your master's degrees and certificates. Congratulations. Thank you, you may be seated. College of Health Professions Interim Dean Paula Son will now come forward and present candidates for the degree Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia Practice. Interim Dean Song. Will the candidates for the degree of the Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia Practice please rise. Ooh. Mr. President, as Interim Dean of the College of Health Professions, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all of the requirements and are recommended by the faculty. Thank you, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia Practice. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 
And now I will ask the Honors College Dean, Scott Bruninger, if he will come forward and acknowledge our students who will be graduating today with Latin and University Honors. Dean Bruninger. Thank you. In accordance with university tradition, those bachelor degree holders who have done exceptionally well academically and have completed a minimum of 45 credits at VCU are recognized with Latin honors. All students with a grade point average between 3.3 and 3.59 on a scale up to 4.0 are graduating cum laude, which signifies graduation with academic distinction. Will these students please rise? Thank you. All students with a grade point average between 3.6 and 3.89 are graduating magnum cum laude, which signifies graduation with high academic distinction. Will these students please rise? Thank you. And all students with a grade point average of 3.9 or higher are graduating summa cum laude, which signifies graduation with the highest academic distinction. Will these students please rise? Thank you and congratulations to you all. I would also like to recognize all bachelor degree candidates who, in addition to our earning Latin honors, have completed the rigorous requirements of Virginia Commonwealth University's Honors College and will graduate today with university honors. Will you please rise? Congratulations on your exceptional achievement. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we will award our baccalaureate degrees and certificates. So for that, I'll ask the College of Engineering Dean, Azim Eskandarian, if you will please come forward to the podium and make that presentation for us. Dean Eskandarian. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degree, baccalaureate certificates, and post-baccalaureate undergraduate certificates in the College of Engineering please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Engineering, it gives me pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your engineering faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And now, congratulations, you may be seated. I now will ask um, College of Health Professions Interim Dean Paula Song to come back again to the podium to present baccalaureate candidates. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees in the College of Health Professions please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, as the Interim Dean of the College of Health Professions, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all of the requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of our health professions faculty, I am very pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees. Congratulations. <laughs> And now I'll ask College of Humanities and Sciences Dean Catherine Ingrassia if she'll please come forward. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degrees, 
baccalaureate certificates and post-baccalaureate undergraduate certificates in the College of Humanities and Sciences, please rise. Yeah. Mr. President, we're a mighty bunch. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Humanities and Sciences, it gives me great pleasure to present these outstanding students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculties within Humanities and Sciences, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. Congratulations. And now I will ask School of the Arts Dean Carmenita Higginbotham if she will kindly come forward as well to present our School of the Arts graduates. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degrees and post-baccalaureate certificates in the School of the Arts please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the School of the Arts, it gives me the greatest pleasure to present these students, these artists, designers, performers, and scholars who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. Congrats. Congratulations. And now, will School of Business Dean Naomi Boyd please come forward to the podium to present her graduates. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees, baccalaureate certificates, and post-baccalaureate undergraduate certificates in the School of Business please rise. Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Business, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of your faculty in business, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. Congratulations. And now I will ask School of Education Interim Dean Kathleen Rudisill if she will kindly come forward to present her graduates. Will the graduates and candidates for all bachelor's degrees and baccalaureate certificates in the School of Education please rise. Mr. President, as Interim Dean of the School of Education, it gives me pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. Congratulations. <laughs> I now ask the Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs Dean Susan Gooden if she will kindly come forward to present our next candidates. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees in the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs please rise. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. President, as Dean of the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs, it gives me immense pleasure to present these outstanding students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by our exceptional faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees. Congratulations. And now I will ask the School of Nursing Dean, Jean Giddens, if she will kindly come forward. Thank you. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees in the School of Nursing please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Nursing, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all the requirements and are recommended by our faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of our nursing faculty, it is my pleasure to confer upon the two of you and all of the other graduates who are already taking care of patients your baccalaureate degrees. And now I will ask University College Interim Dean Darcy Mays if he will kindly come forward to the podium. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies in the University College please rise. Mr. President, as Interim Dean of the University College, it gives me pleasure to present these unstoppable students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you your Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies degree. Congratulations. <laughs> And now, will Life Sciences Interim Vice Provost Rima Franklin kindly come forward to present graduates? Will the candidates for bachelor's degrees and baccalaureate certificates in life sciences please rise? Mr. President, as Interim Vice Provost for Life Sciences, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. Congratulations. <laughs> And now at this time, I'm going to invite Dr. Faith Wilkerson, who is our VCU Alumni Council Chair, to come forward and share some final remarks to our VCU newest alumni. Yes. I just want to do a quick pulse check. Where are our current VCU alums in the audience tonight? Oh, this morning. All right. I'll, no, all right. You're not loud enough for me. You're a new alum. Where's the, give me. I know, I want him to yell like everyone else. <laughs> All right, good morning everyone and to my soon to be fellow graduates. As mentioned, my name is Dr. Faith Wilkerson and I am the current president of our VCU Alumni Council here. And my first message to you is, you did it, Joe. I am a proud three-time alum of this institution so I know all too well what it means to have this moment happen before you today, the excitement, the fear, the constant thoughts of, woo, I cannot wait to eat after this. 
The art of struggling to decide what to do after graduation is and always will be sort of a rite of passage, right, into that next phase of your life. The good news is you're done with the exams, the assignments, and dare I utter the words, group projects. But let's not forget the people who have helped you along the way that we have talked about throughout the morning, your professors, your friends, and your families, who are all here to cheer you on and support you through thick and thin. I absolutely love the blinking lights, by the way. I should have thought of that for my graduation for my family. As you move forward into this next phase of your life, though, let's remember the good times you had here and all the lessons that you've learned. I urge you to keep striving for greatness and making positive impacts on the world, or at least try not to mess up things too much, okay? And speaking of making a difference, I want to encourage you not to forget about your RAM family. We all have a responsibility as alumni to support future generations of students and to help ensure they have the same opportunities you all did. And when I say don't forget, I don't just mean financially. Your time, your professional, personal achievements are just as important to us. So you all will begin seeing a ton of engagement and volunteer opportunities for all of our local and regional uh, chapters, as well as our constituent organizations come your way each month. So I encourage you to read those emails, please. Open those magazines and tap in whenever you can. Most importantly, help us amplify your alumni voices, okay? Never be too shy to share your accomplishments with us as you settle into your new or pre-existing careers. Celebrating your achievements is what helps us maintain that sense of community beyond our university walls. With that being said, on behalf of everyone within the um, uh, Office of Alumni Relations and your VCU Alumni Council, congratulations on this latest achievement. And never forget, we're all faking it until we make it. Congratulations, class of 2023. Before we move to the final portion of today's ceremony, it is essential that we take this time to recognize some of the very important individuals who have supported our graduates over the years, making this day possible. Would the parents of our graduates please rise and be recognized? Let's hear it for the parents, please. Would, would the spouses, partners, and significant others of our graduates please rise and be recognized? <laughs> would the children of our graduates please rise and be recognized? And would all other relatives and friends who supported our graduates please rise and be recognized? <laughs> Thank you. And now to recognize and present our graduates, President Rao. Now, I want you all to know something. This was such an important ceremony today. We had Senator Mamie Locke sitting over there watching all of you this whole time. Thank you so much, Senator Locke, for everything that you do. This is one of the biggest supporters of your education, one of the biggest supporters of our state. Mamie, thank you so much. We're so lucky that we have such support from you. Thank you all so much for coming out. We only have another half hour left of the ceremony. Now, really, it's my pleasure to officially welcome you as VCU's newest alumni. So I want you to do something that's a great tradition, and that is for graduates to take the tassels from the right side of their mortarboard to the left side of their mortarboard. Do that now. Congratulations to VCU's class of 2023!